just fix it a little bit. Okay, so good morning. I, I just want to take this lesson, not very formal. Uh, my goal is to, I don't know, there is a problem. I think it's a nice problem to, uh, to solve. Uh, so let us start with this and then we can go around the problem and then I will try to ask you questions. Like, it would be very good if you try to answer my questions, okay? Uh, so the problem is actually from a university physics text and this is this problem. So a projectile is fired, so you know what's a projectile, yes? So a projectile is fired on an up and incline uh, so, so yeah, we have this inclined surface here. So you can consider in practice this might be a hill, example, and we know somehow the angle that this hill, surface of the hill makes with horizontal. Uh, this is given to be phi. So this is given, and then you project something with this initial speed. Speed is not a correct word, so let us consider we know the initial velocity of this particle, we shoot it, and we know that this angle again from horizontal is given to be theta. And then you know that this uh, projector actually will go and hit somewhere on this inclined surface, and you want to measure this range. A range. So this is D. You want to prove that D is equal to uh, this formula. 2 V naught squared. So V naught is a vector, but when I write V naught squared, you cannot square vectors, you can square numbers. So this is the magnitude of that vector. Okay. And then you have cosine theta multiplied by sine theta minus phi divided by g cosine squared phi, okay? So we want to prove that under these conditions, this will happen. So d uh, is this length. You want to calculate this length and show that this formula gives you the length. And of course, uh, you need, so, you need to know this angle theta, you need to know phi, you need to know your initial speed, uh, velocity or speed here, and then you g is actually, uh, this is 9.8 or something close to Earth, and then everything is known, so we want to show that this is actually d. Uh, so let us keep this problem, let us talk a little bit more general about projectiles. Um, okay, let us start from complete scratch, yes? Yeah. yeah. If you want to investigate or explore uh, the motion of a projectile, where do you start from? Let us just talk about a very simple case. So let me consider the level ground here. I have some point, I shoot a projectile, and it goes here. For example, you might be interested to know the equation of the trajectory, okay? Or I don't know, you want to know where this will end. You might need to know with which angle it will hit the ground and what would be the speed when I do that. For example, in military might be, this is interesting, that you're shooting the enemy, so you want to adjust the angle so that you can immediately shoot the enemy or whatever. So how do you think about this problem? So let us consider this, and I, you know that in physics you can measure the mass, so mass is given. Okay, so you want to uh, uh, predict the future. Okay, so what is happening, you know the initial uh, position of the particle, say it is here. When you say it's here, it means the initial position is known to me. And for example, uh, if you are shooting it, probably you can somehow measure the initial velocity as well. So you know, I don't know if that's a cannonball or something it might be because of, from a specific of the cannonball, you can see that how uh, fast you can shoot the ball or something. Okay, anyway, so we want to solve this problem. 
we want to predict what happens for my particle in the future. And of course, it's not real now. I want to consider that air drag is negligible. Okay, so air drag is negligible and I want to solve this problem. Of course, in reality, you need to consider that into account, but it becomes mathematically more complicated. Okay, let us consider this. How do you solve? How, where do you start to solve this problem? You want to predict the future, yes? And just split up the, split it up into like horizontal and vertical movements. Not yet. No, complete is crash, because you have some experience now. You might know that you need to split it up. But where is the starting point? Yes. You measure the angle. Oh, yeah. So after your measurements are done, yes, you might say that I measured the angle. So you measure the mass. You measure this initial. I don't know, angle that you are shooting through it. So I don't know, let me call it, let me alpha, not confused with these letters here. And then you know about the initial velocity. So alpha, m, velocity, g, everything is known to you. It's not actually a very strange thing. In physics, we can calculate, we can measure all of them. Yes? No, but what is your starting point? Yes. Could we simplify it further by saying you should shoot straight up and see how far? No. How much time it would get take? No. This is com these are coming later, but where do you start really? Yes? You start by calculating the time that you spend in there. No, no, you're thinking in a completely different way. Yes, do we reimagine it as a graph? And <laughs> no, what are you talking about is mostly mathematics, but before that, physics comes into play. No mathematician can sit down in an island and solve this problem from scratch. You need a law governing the nature. If you don't know the law governing the nature, how you can solve the problem, yes? So you need to, because this is a particle you're shooting out, and it behaves in a way. If you don't know the rule governing the behavior of that particle, then how can you translate this physical problem into a mathematical language so that you can solve it later? So this scratch is take a stone and throw it until we realize. <laughs> no, what is no? What is the starting point here? So you need to start with a law that governs the motion. What that law is? We cannot discover this law. Yes. Newton second. Second law. That's the only thing. So in math, I want you to understand it, whatever this trajectory is, it is in geometry. But why nature picks up exactly this trajectory is not mathematics. It's a law of nature. We are going to discover it and then translate it into a mathematical language so that we can predict the future of the particle if that law is the law of nature. If that law changes, the behavior of the particle will change, yes? Is that understandable? So the first starting point, if you want to solve a physics problem, you need to understand the law of nature. That is the difference between a mathematical structure and a physical system. In a mathematical structure, we have axioms, but axioms are just coming from pure thinking. Might be we get some inspiration from nature, uh, for example, I don't know. It's mathematics is like, for example, a chess the chess game. No, no, no one asks why, for example, bishop moves like that and then why rook moves like that. That is a rule that's called something similar to axioms. We put them and then we explore the consequences of those axioms. And as far as we do not have any inconsistency in our system, then mathematically it is acceptable. Okay, but of course, mathematics is more than chess game because then you realize mathematics is much more useful tool in our hands than the chess playing chess. But analogy is quite good. So what you learn in chess, so you realize that it, it doesn't matter if you follow the same rule, the game of chess would be the same even one, one million from now. Nothing will change, yes, because it's a logical system and it doesn't encounter any inconsistency. Uh, but the point is that when you want to set up physics, the axioms are coming from experiments. So we are doing some experiment, and then we just we, we need to observe them very sharply. 
to realize what is going on as soon as we find a pattern so and then we set up a law the so newton did it for us and then it worked actually tremendously good for 300 years more or less until the technology advanced were more advanced and we say deviation we saw deviations from the predictions of newton's law so it means that probably that law does not work at least in this realm or we have to modify that but that's the way that you would know. So if you want to understand the behavior of this particle, it's in the universe. You need to have a law governing that. And there is only one law we know, and it's working perfectly fine for projectiles and everything, even for airplanes and even for shuttles or something like that. Yes? Uh, but, so it means that I have to start with Newton's second law. Yes? So what is the form of Newton's second law? You have the total force acting on your particle, is equal to the mass of your particle multiplied by the acceleration of the particle. I hope that you don't have that much trouble when I put a vector there. So vector is a, these are vector quantities, quantities that not only have magnitudes, but they also have directions, yes? And then uh, what we have here, we want to apply this rule, this law, it's better to say law, for this motion of this particle. So we don't have any problem with that, apparently, which, of course, there are many problems with M as well, if you want to think a little bit de deeper. But let us consider A, and let us consider F. Let us start with F. So what is the only force, if we uh, suppress, actually, we ignore the air drag, what would be the only force acting on M? Yes, sir? Gravity. That's a gravity, okay? So what's up? What, do you know what is the form of the gravity here? What can I write in front of it then? M times G. M times G, but if you are using G like this without a number, that's a scalar. It's a scalar quantity. This is a vector quantity, so you need to give a direction for that. What is the direction of this? Yes, it is towards the center of the Earth, yes? Okay, so it means that it is opposite to the Y direction. I don't know, have you heard about these vectors in your physics course or not? Not? Okay, so that's a little bit problem. Okay, so let me let me write it. Let me let me tell you in this way. So this vector equation is a summarized version of two formulas, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. Okay, so it means that you can write f sub x. I mean that the the sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal m ax and this means that this is equivalent fy is equal to m ay is that understandable this notation that i am using okay so let me write here let me start with this simpler one what is f of x f sub x what is f sub x zero zero because in horizontal direction if we ignore the air drag there is no force yes so I put it there, what happens? It becomes m a x is equal to zero. Now zero product rule tells me either the first one is zero, the second one is zero. So you see mathematics is in the core of it, calculation. M is not zero, so it means that this, in, this in, gives me that a x is equal to zero. Okay, but in, in uh, Acceleration is not an important tool for us. It's a tool because we, using acceleration, we can calculate velocity and position. Mainly position is important for us. The trajectory is for, important for us. So do you remember in the differential equation course, I talked about what is Ax here? What is the relation? So you see here, I am assuming that from here to here is the x coordinate. Of course, this x coordinate is not fixed. It's a function of time, yes? It actually ex expands here. And then you can consider this the y coordinate of your particle f. Okay, now what can I write instead of ax, yes? It's the second derivative of x. x, yes? x is a function of time, so don't get confused. So this means that the second derivative of x is equal to zero. Okay, but now I am asking you, what is the first derivative if the second derivative is zero? Some number. Some constant, yes? Yeah? So we can say that x prime of zero is what? Say a constant c. Oh, sorry, x prime t. Where c is a constant, but I, I, I'm looking for x. So what is x then? 
Yes, what is x? I need a function whose derivative is a constant, yes? Ct. Not ct. Ct plus, oh. plus a constant, yeah. yes? So let me write. Ct, it's, it's crucial. Again, the same problem happens. How many, how many equations I get for x? Infinitely many, one for each choice of c and d. But this does not randomly move, yes? We know that we have a definite trajectory. So why is that? Do you remember what I said in the previous lesson, in math 5? Yes? Because they're all similar with different starting positions. The starting positions velocities. and different velocities, yes? Okay, so it means that what I know about this projectile, okay, what do I know about this projectile? Do, do I know something about the exposition of my projectile at time zero? So let me take this one to be x coordinate, and let me take this one here to be y coordinate of that one, yes? Okay, so what is the initial x position of this particle? According to that system, it is zero, yes? So what does this imply? This implies that uh, d is zero. Do you agree? Yes. Yes? So d is zero. But now, can you tell me what is x prime zero? This I want to ask you. What is x prime of zero? What? Yes? No? Yes? You have, you should. No, what is the meaning of x prime of zero? Tell me, tell me physically. What is the meaning of x prime zero? Yes? The x component of the velocity at the initial time. Yes? Because this is the x derivative. So, it is, not, it is not giving you the vector velocity. It is just giving you the x component of the velocity at the initial time. But can you tell me what is the x component of the initial velocity? This vector has length v0, but you want to see what is the component of this vector on the x-axis. What is the component? Yes? Dx. No, so you need to, by the way, I, I only have V node, so you need to express everything in V node. The alpha, M, G, and things like that are given to me, so I have to express everything in terms of them, yes? Yes? The X have a V node. Okay, but what that is? I only have V node. So you say that V node component, okay. Yes, that's right, but what that is, you need to express it in terms of V node, Alpha, G, M, the things that you know. The cosine of V naught? Not the cosine. V naught okay. times, times cosine. Yeah. Yes? So it means that this should be V naught cosine alpha. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so can you tell me what does this mean? It means that, so X prime of zero on the one hand is this. On the other hand, what is X prime zero? Can you tell me according to this? What should it be? Constant. A constant C. Yes? So if you compare them, you found your C. C is V naught cosine alpha. Yes? And then what you want to do, you want to calculate xt. X of t. So we are done. X of t is equal. Instead of C, I put that expression. And instead of t, you put zero. Probably you have seen this as a formula in physics. So this is the x component of the projectile. But the law that uh, helped us to calculate this was actually Newton's second law on the x component. Yes? So I got this. So I don't have any problems. If you ask me, if you give me this, if you give me v node, and if you give me alpha, I can predict the future x component for my particle at any instant of time that you want. Yes, so that's a prediction. Yes, so xt, so let me write it here. Okay, I have written it here. Now let us solve this problem on the y coordinate. Let us see what happens. Okay, how should I solve it on the y coordinate? Let us, again, I need to go back to Newton's law, but probably I need to consider this, uh, this condition. So let me, we have it here. So let me start from here. Okay, tell, help me to solve that. So I will start from f sub y is equal to a, m, a sub y. So what can I write for f and y? Yes, what can I write? 
<laughs> yes, say something. It's not hard. The, the only Y component of, of any force acting on my particle. There's only one force acting on my particle, and that's the force of gravity, as you said. And it's pointing downwards. Yes? So what is that? Um, negative mg. Negative mg. Yes, because, but by the way, this negative mg is a convention. The reason that I consider it negative mg, because I chose to put this y coordinate pointing upward. The positive, if I, if I choose the coordinate here in this way, then you should write my. That's important. So you remember when you set up your coordinates, because if physics doesn't care about coordinate systems, there is there is no coordinate system when you want to shoot this projectile. You put the coordinate system there, and you are free to choose whatever you like with the coordinate system. Of course, can I choose the coordinate system in this direction? I will talk about that. Can I? In principle, the answer is yes. But if I do this, I will, life, I will make life harder for myself because I have to calculate hard things. But I want to teach you if you have time. What happens if I start changing this perspective from that coordinate system to a coordinate system? Physics shouldn't change because physics doesn't know about any coordinate system. This is us who set up a coordinate system to be able to solve the problem. And in principle, this is one very important, uh, that is called... Uh, invariance of physics uh, with respect to any kind of choice that uh, we have for the for the for the coordinate system the physics shouldn't depend on the coordinate system that we are choosing yes okay so now let us try in this coordinate system that i have set up in this way then you are right instead of this one if you don't mind let me write this on the left m sub a sub a y and then i have to write minus m g yes of course, what you do first, now everything, I, for my, I don't know, from my perspective, physics is finished here. The rest of it is mathematics, and then what we get, I interpret it in physics language. But many physicists, I, I would say that physics is, mathematics is so hard for people to learn, so they want to be lazy, say that, okay, let us just rely on physical intuition. But I really don't uh, believe in that case. So that, 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 still there are different groups of physicists thinking in that way. But anyway, for me, physics is finished here. The axiom is coming from it. This is not something that I can sit down in an island and think about it to reach to this equation, no. But then after that, mathematics comes in. Okay, now tell me, how should I calculate mathematics? Mathematically. What is the first thing that you do? You just say it, yes. Divide by m. Divide by m, because I want to get rid of and make it simpler. Okay, then what? What can I write for this? Remember, my goal is to find the y coordinate. So, what can I write for a sub y? Yes, yes, just say it. Second derivative of y. Second derivative of y is equal to minus g. According to experiments, this g, at least at, at up to these heights, if that's not a very big height, this is a constant. Yes? Okay, and then it means that it makes me a lot of. Uh, simplification. So I want to find y prime now. It's a constant. So what is y prime? Minus gt. Minus gt plus g. Plus a constant. So let me const call the constant a. Yes? But I am still uh, want to calculate y, uh, yt. So what is this? By the way, you are solving differential equations here. Yes? Because your unknown is a function. You are looking for the function. So what is yt? It becomes minus g squared. Like no, g is a constant. So minus g goes that out, and then you take a primitive function for t. What's a primitive function for t? It's t squared divided by 2. So I would write minus 1 half g t squared, and this constant becomes a t, and then I, have, I need another constant, yes? And I think this equation looks familiar for you from physics, yes? But you now understand where it is coming from. It's coming from second law of Newton, yes? But still there are two constants I have to adjust them okay so this is a generic solution for this differential equation but it is sensitive to my initial conditions okay we do the same thing if I ask you what is y of zero on what is y of zero here at the, at the initial instant of time what is the value of y P zero sine one thousand. no no y you are talking about y prime what is y at zero? Zero. Zero. y at zero is zero. 
this is on the one hand. So can you tell me what does this imply for one of these constants? B is, zero. B is zero, yes? Because Y at zero should be zero. When I replace T with zero, this is gone, this is gone. I am left with B, but B is supposed to be zero. So this means that B is equal to zero. And then, uh, now as you told me, what is Y prime of zero? What is Y prime? What is the meaning of Y prime of zero? It means the initial velocity of my particle on the Y direction. So what that is, it is this length of this time multiplied by sine of alpha. Is that understandable? Yes? So it becomes V node sine of alpha. This is on the one hand. On the other hand, we have this equation. I plug zero here, it becomes A. On the one hand, we know this is our initial condition. On the other hand, according to mathematics, Y prime of zero should be A. So this means that A is nothing except this one. Yes. And then I plug this back. So when I plug this back, so if you don't mind, let me write these equations here. Okay? So the first equation I got, let me write it here for you. So x of t is v node cosine alpha multiplied by t. And then y of t is equal to minus 1 over 2 g is t squared plus, plus a, which I got it here. So these are my equations. Yes? So you see that those formulas, one of them is predicting the future in the x-axis, and one of them is predicting the future uh, on the y-axis. So we actually have the equations. So because you can ask a lot of questions. For example, you can ask for yourself, what is the range of this projectile? So it means that, what is this uh, maximum value of x? So how can you use those equations? So I, I think if your mathematics is good, your physics automatically becomes good if you understand the connection between the equations and the physical world. Okay, so if I want to answer this question, I don't know. If you want to solve this in your physics course, the formula is given to you or something in the formula sheet for the range or something? No. Okay, but anyway, but if you want to find the range, find the formula for the range. Yes, what is your suggestion? We try to find t for, for the second point where y is zero, and then when we have t, we substitute that into the x. Exactly, so it means that, you are interested at this point. At this point, you know the coordinates. Again, the y coordinate is zero. So the y coordinate is zero here when we start. And another part, another time, the uh, y coordinate becomes zero when we end here. So if I put y t equals to zero, from mathematical point of view, how many answers do you think that I will get by solving this? Yes? Just tell it. Two. Two, two yes? And one of them, you know what that number is. What that number is? Zero. It should be zero. If something like this happened that you don't get zero back, it means that you have done something wrong in your mathematical calculations, yes? It's always good to see the physics picture as well. So this means that I put minus one over two gt to the power of two, we know sine of alpha times t equals to zero. And then forget about everything. This is just a mathematical second degree equation. You can use PQ formula. So, so for me, when I reach this point, I shut down my physics problems and I think about it mathematically, okay? So this is a quadratic equation. What is my unknown? T. t is my unknown. Is it a quadratic equation? Yes, because I see T squared. So then I will ask myself, how could I solve a quadratic equation? Of course, how can I solve it in this case? I don't even need ABC formula or I don't even need PQ formula. There is a simpler way to do that, yes? What is that? So factor t, yes, you factor t out, and then you get minus one over two gt, and then plus y zero and sine of alpha, and then it is equal to zero. So either this one is equal to zero, the zero product rule, or minus one over two gt plus v node sine of alpha is equal to zero. So this was predictable from the beginning, but you are not interested in that answer. So you knew about that from the beginning, from physical point of view, but here, let us just do it in our head. I move this to the right and multiply by the reciprocal of this number, so I get t. 
So what that is, is two V node sine alpha uh, divided by G. Yes? So if I ask you now, so mathematics is finished now. What is the interpretation of this T? Now you should be able to write it in physics, in physics language. What is the interpretation of this T here? This is a time. But which time? If you want to write something in front of it. Time until collision. Yes, the time that from the initial time up to this collision. Yes. But uh, this is T. How can I use this T to find the range? Yes? Plug it into the X formula. Yeah, plug it back into the X formula because you are interested in the X coordinates. So you interpret this here. Here, the range that you are interested in, in this coordinate setup, matches with X coordinate of the particle. Yes? So you got this time. You want to see what is the X coordinate of my particle at this particular time. Do you understand? So I put it back into the x. So then I calculate x at this given time. 2 v node sine alpha divided by g. So what happens? So this becomes equal to, uh, I put it back here. It becomes v node uh, cosine alpha and multiplied by this 2 v node sine alpha divided by g. Is that understandable? And let us simplify. And this is a famous combination. Yes, hopefully you remember at least this is familiar. 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. This is the formula of the double angle, sine of double angle formula. So this becomes equal to V node, V node, it becomes V node squared. And then I have 2 times sine times cosine. It becomes simply sine of 2 alpha and then divided by G. So usually in physics texts, you see this. This is the range of the projectile. Yes? Is that understandable? Yes. Okay. So this is more or less where you start from. But this problem considered a hard problem even in the university text. Okay? This is... Can I use this formula to calculate this? You, I want you to understand. So do you have a question you want to say something? No, I, don't, I think I know. Yes, let, let us go back to this. But, but this is a formula which gives you the range of your projectile in this setup. Okay, this is more or less the range again. But I want you to understand the setup is different from that setup. Okay? So if you want to solve this problem, I don't know, I saw it, it is red in that problem. So it's a level three problem in the university text. But if you think it is not that hard, but you need to understand, if you have all these formulas in your memory, it's useless. Okay, so that's a good question because it teaches you physics. If you want to come up to this, you need to start from scratch again. And everything that we talked about becomes useful. Is that understandable? But before leaving this, let me ask you one question. Uh, what do you think is this trajectory? Is it part of a curve? Can you find the function whose graph is this? Now let us talk mathematically. So what, what is the, can you give me a function whose graph is this trajectory? And of course, a part of the graph is this trajectory. Sine function? Uh, no. So let us see. We need to predict. What do you predict for that? Isn't it just a second uh, degree? Yeah. Okay, but why? So why you chose y? Because y is quadratic, x is linear. Of course, you know that this is not a line, so you said that probably it should be a... But this is the different. This is, in, this is in a different plane. This is in yt plane. In yt plane, definitely this is a parabola. So it means that if I draw a graph where t, the, the horizontal one is the time, and then this one is y, definitely that would be a parabola. But be careful. Is it the trajectory of the particle? I don't know. Can you draw this parabola? If I put zero here, y is zero. So it means that my parabola starts from here. Do, what about the parabola? Does it have a maximum or a minimum, this parabola? So you see, a lot of mathematics is needed. So which type of parabola is that? 
opens up or opens down? Let's just say it. You don't need to raise your hand. Opens? No. It has a maximum. Why? How did you realize that? Negative. Yes, this one is a negative value. Do you remember in Math 2C we learned that if that number is negative, it opens down and the other way around. And by the way, by derivative, you should also be able, now you are in the more advanced level of mathematics, it shouldn't be hard for you to realize. Okay, so I don't know. So it means that it goes up and comes back here. I thought it opens up and it can equals like pointing upwards. Yeah, but this is actually the true uh, graph. But if I take this graph, do you think this graph will exactly matches this graph? No. I want you to understand, yes, because this is in YT plane. It has nothing to do with real trajectory. Yes, it is just giving you uh, what is the relation between Y and T. But here, I don't want a relation between Y and T. What do I want here? if I want to see the real physical trajectory in front of my eyes, okay? So what do I need? I need a relation between, yes? Y and X. Y and X. But here, I do not have that directly in front of me. I have relation of X to T. I have relation Y to T. This is called parametric equation. So X, T is the parameter here. X is related to T. Y is related to T. So somehow X and Y are also related, yes? But if I find the direct relation, this would be at the equation of this trajectory. So let us explore that. Let us do that some mathematical work here. So how can I do that, by the way? How can I find the direct connection between x and t? X, sorry, x and y. You can rewrite uh, t as a function of x instead. So how much time do you have to be traveled for? Yes. Given x. Yeah. And then? And then you just... <laughs> no, not there is one more step yet before graphing that. So that's up to you. Do you want to uh, look at it physically or mathematically? Mm -hmm. But at this stage, I don't care about physics you at use. all because that's not physics, that's mathematics. I want to find the relation between x and y. You're using that formula, you can recreate the y. So now let us think a little bit. So what how do you see these equations? For me, this equation is two equations, two uh, and uh, one on, yes, and that is t. And I want to find x and t, so I eliminate t. I'm not talking in physics language if not necessary, yes. Okay, so uh, t is here, x divided by v naught, cosine alpha. Then I plug it back here and here. What happens, I get an equation in which t disappears. What is left for me? is x and y. So that is the connection between x and y that I am looking for, yes? So let us just put it back here. So y coordinate is equal to minus a half g and t squared is x squared divided by v naught squared cosine alpha squared. And then what happens here plus v naught sine alpha and then times x over v naught cosine alpha. Actually, I am done. This is the equation between y and x. But let me make a simple form. That's always the case. So why we should leave it at this state. So minus g, so I would write minus here, g, 2 goes down. Yes, and then I have x squared. And then sine alpha over cosine alpha is just tangent alpha. Yes, and v node here and v node there are canceled. So it becomes tangent alpha multiplied by x. This is the equation of the trajectory. Okay, so now let us look. What, what is this guy here in physics? Can I consider this a constant? G is a constant, V node is not under my control. When I shoot it with that speed, it is gone, yes? Alpha, I need to decide in the beginning, but when I decided, it is done. So everything here is a constant. Tan alpha is constant, so that's a constant. So if you look at this problem mathematically, this is a constant plus another constant times this. But this is a famous parable. So it means that if I do not consider air drag, this if I do it, for example, I don't know, in moon, this would be really, uh, it would be really a parable. Yes? But then, of course, if you want to do engineering things, 
you need to consider air drag and then a lot of things come in and then the, the only thing that happens is physics is more or less the same but mathematics becomes very complicated because the differential equation that you will face is not just that simple differential equation that you can solve immediately. Yes, so that's I want you to understand. Physics is not that complicated again. You, so you need to enter another force of drag, for example, if you have your particle here going on. So if this is your force of gravity, the drag force is always opposing the motion. So this would be something like that. And then of course, this needs experimental work. And it, ter it turns out that this, the, uh, the magnitude of the force highly depends on the velocity of the particle. If the velocity is moderately small, so you can consider it as proportional to the velocity. But it becomes, for example, for a missile, which is very, uh, I don't know, it goes with very high speed, it is proportional to higher powers of V. And when the higher powers of V comes in, mathematical tricks that you need to use to solve for x and y becomes more complicated but the physics is still the same yes so it doesn't increase the level of physics it increases the level of mathematical uh, points here okay so this is good to know now let us go back to this problem and let us see what is your opinion here and then uh, do you have any suggestions how can i solve this problem I don't know what you want to do here. <laughs> we can do it a lot of in a, in a lot of ways, not a lot of ways, but some ways here. So let me. If I want to solve this problem, I can use I can solve it pure mathematically. Forget about projectiles, projectiles, and everything. So, so, let us start from scratch. I want to hear from you. What is your point of view? I want to solve this problem. Where do you start from? Yes, I continue uh, like the previous time all the way until we put uh, try to find the two solutions. No, let us provide. let us talk algorithmically. What is the first step? I, I will find the equation for the uh, hypotenuse. Oh, okay, so okay, and then and then I would try to set the equation equal to the the trajectory. Uh -huh. That's the way that I was thinking. If you wanted to think it mathematically, this is probably a very good way. So because you brought this up, let us solve it in your, in, in your way. Okay? So this way that you are solving it is completely mathematical solution. Yes? And you are using the formulas. Okay? So what Alex is saying, first of all, re remember, you need to, first of all, when you want to solve a physics problem, you need to set up a coordinate system. You need to choose it in a wise direction so that it is it actually facilitates the job. So let us take this more or less conventional one as before. Okay. So now what actually Alex said is completely mathematical. So what he is saying, he is saying that do not look at it in the world of physics. From physics, from mathematics point of view, that is just a straight line. I can find its equation. Yes. Why I can find, by the way, can you tell me what is the equation of this line? Yes? Just give y, me the equation. Y equals sine of uh, no. phi. No. What is the equation? So this, at this level, you should be very quick in this. So you want to find an equation for that line in that coordinate system. What's the equation of that? What is the equation of this line, if you want? Y equals x. No, y equals x happens if this is pi over 4 y over x, y equals to x is the bisector. Yes? But here it is phi. If that's phi over 4, you are right. But it's not phi, phi over 4. What is that? It's alpha. It's phi. Phi is a given number, but we don't know. Phi equals phi times x. Not phi times. Come on, guys. <laughs> yes? You see, the reason that you face problems is that 
Be- I think in this way. I'm just telling you how I think. When I ask, when someone asks me what is an equation of this line, I am not confused at all because I learned for finding an equation of a line, I need a point and a k value. How many of you thought in this way? Okay, so why why couldn't you? So what is the what is the point? I tried to say. What is the point? Can you tell me? Uh, the, the point is x. No, so that's crazy. Zero. Oh. Because. X is not a number. You need a number. What if you if you tell me what is X? What if I ask you what is X? What do you say? So you oh, see, you uh, have a line uh, from this line. There are infinitely many points on the line. I don't know this point. I don't know this point, but I need. I know one of them, and that is zero zero. You shouldn't get confused. So one point is zero zero. If you ask me, is this the only point? Of course not. But I only know this point of that line. Okay? But what is the k value? Yes? Tangent of five. Tangent of five. Tangent of five. So the k value is tangent of five. Yes? Do you know that? Yes or no? Yes. This is an extremely important. If you don't know that k value of a line, is the tangent of that angle. Assume that you don't know, but it doesn't mean that you should give up. Assume that you didn't know. I really want you to know this. K value of a line is equal to the tangent of the angle that the line makes with the positive part of the x-axis. It's extremely important. Remember that. But assume that you don't know. What do you do then? Yes? You look at it as just a normal triangle, and then you, you know the opposite side and you know the adjacent side. Yeah, exactly. For example, you might assume that I have this. So assume that this point is x and y. What does it mean? It means that if I go down from here to here is x, from here to here is y. Yes? And then hopefully you remember the formula for k value. Yes? If you don't know that, then you will be in trouble. So what is the delta y here? It becomes the y final point minus y the initial point. So it becomes y minus 0 divided by x minus 0. So it becomes y over x. But y over x in this right angle triangle is just tangent of 5. So yes. So it means that now, can you write me the equation for this line finally? What is the equation? y is equal to? Yes? Tangent 5 times x. Tangent 5 times x. Yes? So that is the equation of this line. Is that understandable? Is it given to you? Don't don't let tangent of alpha distracts you. Yes, tangent of phi is a number. It is written in a fancy way, but phi is assumed to be given to you. So tangent of phi is just a number, even though it seems a little bit odd. But that's just a number. Okay. And then what is your strategy? Can you continue now? Why this is helpful to know the equation of this? Yes, Emil. Um. Later on, when we have when we're trying to find the roots for y of t, we can find when y of t equals that line instead. No, you are solving it from a physical point of view, but you don't need to do that. Yes? We find the intersection points. Exactly. I'm, so you are thinking completely pure mathematical, yes? So you are saying that from my perspective, this is just a line and this is just a parabola. I want to find the intersection between that line and the parabola. Okay, but can you tell me? Can you tell me what is the equation of the parabola now? Yes. Same as before, except instead of uh, instead of alpha, we use uh, zero. No, zero. Uh, we use uh, yeah, theta. Instead of alpha, we use theta. Yes. So the trajectory. So let me write. The trajectory of that is what? Minus a g divided by 2. V node is the same V node here. But instead of alpha, alpha was the angle with the horizontal, yes? The angle between the initial velocity with the horizontal. That angle here in this problem is theta. So do you understand if I replace alpha with theta or you don't understand? If you don't, please let me know. And then I have... Tan- tangent of theta x. So everybody agrees with this? Are you are you comfortable with replacing alpha in that formula with theta? Yes? 
Okay, and then what I need to do, as you said, I need to find the intersection between this and that. It becomes this point. And now if I have the coordinates of this point, measuring the distance from this point and this point is distance formula in mathematics again. So nothing in physics going on here. It's just pure mathematics, yes? So what we should do, we need to find the intersection point. Now help me, how can I find the intersection point? I have to solve a system of equations, yes? So I have this equation. Oh, there is a two here, yes? I missed the two here. There is a two. Uh, so it becomes cosine two theta, and then I have x squared, then I have tangent theta, x, and the other one is y equals to tangent phi, x. So how should I solve this system? The most uh, effective tool for solving a system is method of substitution, yes? I eliminate one of the variables. But it is clear, it is easier to eliminate y, because y is this, y is this, I equate them. Yes, what happens? Yeah, then you, the rest of it is not physics at all. Actually, the way that you started doesn't involve physics at all. The physics, we have already done it. You are using the mathematical results to solve this new problem. So what is going on from a physical point of view? No new physics, more new mathematics. Yes? So now I need to find x. Of course, one of the x's you can already predict, that is 0. Do you agree x equal to 0 is one solution? If I put 0 here, 0, 0, it becomes 1. So forget about x equals to 0. So assume that x is not equal to 0. Yes, in principle, you need to move it to the left-hand side and factor x out and use the 0 product rule. But let us just di divide by x because I am not interested in this solution. I already knew about that. I am only interested in this, and it is trivially not 0. Okay, so I divide by x, so it becomes minus g divided by 2v node squared cosine squared theta x plus tangent of theta, and then equals to tangent of phi. But I am looking for x, so that is what, what I have to do. I need to move it to the right-hand side because I am looking for x, so let us just do it in one go. So it becomes tangent phi minus tangent theta, and then multiplied by the reciprocal of this number, so it becomes minus 2v node squared cosine squared theta divided by g. Yes? So that is the x coordinate. But then it becomes mathematically horrible a little bit, yes? Because how should I calculate d? Everyone knows about d. d is what? Square root of x squared plus y squared. Do you agree? And x and y are the coordinates of this one. So x is this horrible thing. I have to square it. And y, uh, by the way, I haven't found y yet. I have to put it back, for example, here and find y. And then when I have x, when I have y, I have to plug them here, raise them to power 2, add them, take square root. And then I should be able to do it mathematically, and I should be able to find this formula. Usually the hard problems gives you the formula because technically you can plug them in and say that this is your answer. Technically that's right, but they ask you to prove it in this simplified version. Okay, but even your mathematics is good, you can do it much better. Even from mathematical point of view. If I want to solve this problem, I will not do this in this way. Do you have any alternative? This is your x, definitely correct. I have to put it back to find y. But do you have an alternative way to solve it? You see, these are technical problems. This is why you see that some person was able to solve a problem, another person was not able, because he was more skilled in calculations and things like that. Okay, so if I want to solve this problem, I will never start from doing this, even though technically it's right. So do you remember, when I was teaching, I always tell you that you need to find a way which is easier for your brain to do it. Okay, if you have a computer, of course, you just plug them in and ask to calculate this. But let us calculate this uh, a little bit different. So why I am in hurry? I, my goal is to calculate this. Do you agree? My goal is to calculate this. I can momentarily as pretend that I know x and y. Of course, I know x is this horrible thing, and y is this x multiplied by tangent. But let me write this in this way. 
Instead of x, I can write x squared, but y is this y. Of course, y is also this y, but working with this y is easier, yes? So I will put it back here. So it becomes tangent out, tangent of this squared, x squared. Yes? And then what happens? You immediately realize that I can factor x squared out. This becomes this. Do you agree? I don't know. Is this combination that is familiar for you in trigonometry? 1 plus tangent squared is familiar, yes? What is the formula? If you remember, you just write the formula. If not, it's a matter of seconds to, uh, to get it. Because this becomes 1 sine squared over cosine squared. And if I take the common denominator, what happens in the numerator? Can you tell me? What happens? Oh, it becomes 1. It becomes 1. Yes, so that's the famous formula. 1 plus tan squared of phi is 1 over cosine squared phi. Okay, so if you want to do it mathematically, what would be the answer of this square root? Can you tell me? x times the square root of uh, x times uh, x divided by cosine out of phi. Mathematically, not 100%. Mathematically, you have to respect and put absolute value. In this context, I don't need absolute value. Why? Here, I need to go back to the physics problem. So, x is here, but it's clear x is positive. And what is phi? Phi is between 0 and 90 degree, definitely. So, it is in the first quadrant. So, cosine is positive. So, I don't need, you need to pay attention to these calculational details. They are very important. So you have to, there is no exception. I have asked you several times. What is the square root of this box? If you answer this, it is wrong. You have to answer this one. There is no exception for that. So I have to put absolute value, but in this context, x and cosine are positive. So then I remove it simply. So by the way, isn't, isn't it easy? So this is your D. You wanted to work with horrible things there, but this is just your D. There's one step. Uh, now, I, of course, I have to divide x by cosine phi. I have already my uh, x, but assume that you want to put this in this equation and you calculate y and put them here, square them, add them, take square root. It becomes horrible, yes? But immediately you see that if I just pretend that I know x and y, I calculate, what I understand is that my answer is just this x divided by cosine phi. That's it. Yes? It's my D. So can you tell me what D is now? So what D is? Let me write it here. D is this expression. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes here. I have to divide it by cosine phi. So I, I write something. Tell me if you agree with me. I look here. I don't have a negative sign. So it motivates me to get rid of that negative sign. Put 2. Put V node. Yes? And then what do I have? Instead of, I don't have any of these combinations, but I write tan theta minus tan phi. Is that understandable? And then I have a cosine squared theta. Mr. Baba, yes? Are we just allowed to drop the minus sign because it's... No, I'm not dropping <laughs> because oh, okay. I don't like it. Oh, okay. No, I am just telling me I drop this one, but I interchange these oh. two. Yes? Because minus signs are not good. If you want to be, you have to be fast in calculations, okay? I, I see a minus sign, I don't like it. I need to find a way to get rid of it. Of course, I cannot just cross it over. I wrote it, wrote it positive, positive, but here it is phi minus theta. I wrote theta minus phi to compensate for that drop minus sign. Is that understandable or not? Yes, Alex? I interchange the A minus B and B minus A differ by a negative sign. Yes? So what happens, this becomes this, and then divide this by, do you agree with me? Do you agree with this, what I have written here is correct? Yes. I divided that expression by cosine phi. When I divide this expression by cosine phi, cosine phi goes as a factor in the denominator. It becomes this. So now let us compare. This is good, we have it. G is good, we have it, yes? The only thing that um, I am facing problem, I do not have any tangents in the formula. I have two tangents here. So what's the motivation? Yes. You see, it is not clear. Might be, might be in the book they write it. That's also quite acceptable. That is the correct formula. 
But I told you that whenever they want to ask you hard questions, they write it in a way that they force you to get that formula so that they can evaluate your mathematics as well. Okay, but of course, this formula is completely correct. Is it reasonably correct? Because it is written in terms of V node, theta, phi, and G. And all of them are known to us. Yes? If I have an X here, this is not an acceptable formula. Because then people say what X is. So you need to write a formula in terms of your given numbers. This formula is completely okay. It is written in terms of given numbers. But unfortunately, it is not the one demanded in the problem. Yes, so we need to do mathematics. So that is not physics at all. So how can I do that, do you think? Where do you start from? With the tangent theta minus tangent phi. Okay, what, what is your suggestion? We use the relation between tangent sine and cosine. Yes, this is the only thing, and it is reasonable, because the formula relates to phi sine cosine of theta and phi. But I, am tan I have tangent and tangent here, so I have to get rid of them in favor of sine and cosine. Yes, so let us do what happens. So the natural step to do is very natural. So it becomes sine theta divided by cosine theta, and this one is the same, but for phi. Okay, what is the next step? Uh, the next Yes? No. What is the next step? Common denominator. Common denominator. Just tell it, okay? So you, you should be, be careful. I might be you are thinking to see everything until the end. Yes? It is not good because in mathematics we cannot see everything until the end. But is there any... The, the most natural step... Because we cannot do anything except one thing, let us do see what happens, okay? Might be this is not working, so you need to find a balance. Because if you just stop and don't continue, it's not good. So can you do it in one go, yes? What would be the denominator then? It is this one. And then this will multiply by that. And then this one will be multiplied by that. Are you comfortable with this calculation? Yes? Yes? But at least the numerator should sound familiar. Even if you don't know the details, you can go and find it in the formula sheet, which, of course, in the first year, you're not allowed to use that. This, is it, is it familiar for you? What is that? Addition. This is the subtraction formula for sine. Yes? So what can I write? It is sine of theta minus phi. And in the denominator, I have cosine theta, cosine phi. Agree? But now everything is very nice, yes? Instead of this guy, I put this back when I calculate it. So let us just do that. So it is 2v node squared. Instead of this package, I put that. So it becomes sine theta minus phi divided by cosine theta, cosine phi. And then after this package, I have cosine squared theta. And in the denominator, I have g cosine phi, yes? Okay, now what happens? This cosine theta and one of them are gone. So what happens? It becomes 2v node squared sine theta minus phi. One of the cosines survives. And then one of these cosines will go, will be multiplied in the denominator. Yes? And finally, this is our formula. Yes? But we don't have time. Might be next week. I will set up this problem because I want to teach you some physics as well. There is no physics behind this solution. It's completely pure mathematical. The physics was finished when I wrote the trajectory formula. That is coming from physics. But then I use those formulas just using mathematically. Instead of seeing this as a projectile, I am just seeing it as a, I am just looking at it geometrically. I don't care about if this is a hill or whatever. For mathematics, this is just a line. And for mathematics, this is just a parabola. And I want to find the intersection to find the distance from a point to another point. So you, by the way, this interplay between mathematics, geometry, and physics, and everything are really, really important. Many people could solve problems by looking 
a, a problem from a different perspective. And even in mathematics itself, for example, algebraic geometry is a combination between algebra and geometry. Many pe people couldn't solve the al pure algebraic problem, so they changed the way of thinking about it in a geometrical way. Then they could, you could use all the tools that you have in geometry to solve a problem in algebra. So it's very, very important to, ch to change the perspective. If you are interested in this problem, I really recommend you to do two things. That would be the topic of the last session. That would be next Friday, Thursday. Next Thursday, I will teach you again. I want you to be able to start this problem from scratch using physics again. Assume that you start from Newton's second law and solve this problem again. Okay? And don't, so just find what you want to find. And then this is also teaches you a lot of physics. Even though this is not a very natural coordinate system, there is another natural coordinate system for this. Uh, which one do you think is good? Yes? Uh, the x-axis goes with D. Yes, exactly. So I want you to be able to solve it from physics point of view again. If you, in the beginning, consider, this is extremely important, if you really understand mathematically and physically, okay, how to solve this problem in a new coordinate system. Uh, so you see that here, what is the y coordinate of this point with respect to this coordinate system? Is it from here to here? But what is the y coordinate of the same physical point in the new coordinate system? Yes, zero. it is zero. So this number is different, but physics that you get out of it would be the same. So the distance, everyone knows that. Of course, it was not correct. For example, in relativity, you know the distance depends on velocity sometimes. But if intuitively, if you are, if you are living in this universe around us, uh, we are not going to high speeds. So we know that it, the, the distance of points shouldn't depend on what? On the coordinate system that we are using. But coordinates, the numbers that we assign to points, depend on the coordinate setup, yes? So if I ask you what are the coordinates, you would say that from here to here is x, from here to here is y in this coordinate system. Let me call it capital X and capital Y. I consider exactly the same point A. In the old coordinate system, you write A has X and Y as coordinates. But in this, the same point, in the new coordinate system, the Y is zero. And what is X, by the way? What is X? D. X is D. Yes? So in this setup, if you can find just the X coordinate of A, you don't need to continue. Because that X coordinate, so here, do you remember I found the X coordinate? But I have started a lot of calculations after that because x in the previous setup is not d. But in this setup, if I can find the x coordinate of a, I am done. That is exactly your d. So I want you to be able to write equations. It will teach you a lot of physics if you can write correct equations in this setup. You will start again from Newton's second law, definitely. But see what. What is the radical changes if I do this? It will, I don't want to spoil the problem. And there is another problem here. I want to solve this one. This is also mathematically good. So if we can solve, I don't know if we can solve these two problems next time, but hopefully we can. So please think about this. Solve this problem, especially in this new coordinate system. I want you to see, I want you to see how do you get the equations of motions right. If you can do that, it means that you are not, you are actually in a very advanced level, so you understand what the, what is going on. So in physics, we have a little bit big problem. So math, in mathematics, you just do mathematics if you know, but in physics, you, sh you should have a connection between your calculations and physical world as well. So they should make sense, otherwise it is not very helpful. Okay, so let us stop this here. I don't know, how did you find it? Was it useful somehow? You get something out of it or not? Okay, so we can uh, continue just this one. I think we have only one more session. That was that is the third of June, I think. I don't know if there is a lesson or not. But yes, if you are here, I'm here. We can have a lesson. We don't care about what's going on outside. Okay.
Okay, thank you very much. So I end this stream.